A very good evening and thank you for joining us. From wherever you are watching, we're coming to you live from the Kampala Serena Conference Center, Nayam Room. And tonight we continue that discussion on children. Tonight, however, we will be talking about early childhood development. And uh, I know we're going to rename it to integrated, you know, and add a couple of other words, but I'll have somebody explain why when they begin to speak. So let me introduce my guests for this evening, and I'll start to my very right, Mr. Mondo Chateka, who is the Commissioner for Children and Youth Minister of, in the Ministry of Gender, and he oversees the National Integrated Early Childhood Development Policy. Good evening, viewers. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, next to him is Shafiq Sekalala, who is the Program Director of the Madrasa Early Childhood Program of the Aga Khan Foundation. Good evening, viewers, and thank you, Josephine, for inviting me for this show. You're welcome. And next to him is Audrey Dralega, who is a primary education specialist, early years enthusiast, founder of People and Potential Education Consultancy, which was established in 2015, and it has since worked with 20 schools and organizations within Kampala. Welcome, Audrey. Thank you. Good evening, viewers. And uh, finally, Manuela Mulondo, a founder and CEO of The Credo, Uganda's first ever child care center designed for the workplace. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, viewers. All right. So let's say it as it is, uh, but even after that, we'll have a clip of the young children that my producer went out and got earlier in the week so that when we start talking about these people, we actually have an idea of what we're talking about. Is brought to you by Sparkle Saloon. Professional, affordable, and quality services. So hello, Mr. We are very happy to see you. Hello. Hello. Are you ready to sing for them? Yes. Okay, which song? My two hands. staying with them, we get to learn what they want, how to handle them, how to interact with them, get to understand their abilities as babies. What is that that they cannot miss out in this, at this level? At this, at this level, it's playing. They should do a lot of playing. playing. Yeah, just to relax their minds, because to make these children learn, Actually, the best method we use is play way, because they understand most through playing, singing, dancing, other than making them sit and teach. there you have it. We managed to get some of those pictures from uh, Kampala Quality Kindergarten and I'd like to thank them for allowing us to film there just to give us an idea of um, 
the kindergartens or the centers that we have within uh, Kampala. So first of all, my question to my panelists, when we say early childhood development, which age are we talking about? Well, when we talk about early childhood, we are talking about zero years to eight years. To eight and, years. And, and when they talk about zero, it's at con conception. Although I want to take it back even before conception, because we're looking at the young of the garden. Exactly. <laughs> the, 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 the young girls and young boys who are getting ready to get married need, need to know what type of mother of my children will this be? What type of father of my children this should be? So zero for now and for the purpose of this show and for, uh, as it's defined in our policy, let's take it from conception to eight. Okay. Well, Ali, I was just saying early childhood development, but then I, I was told I have to say national integrated early childhood development. What is the point of the N and the I? The point is that one, this is a national policy. Two, that we are talking about integrated services. That you know, it doesn't take a child only one factor to grow up. We are talking about nutrition, we are talking about learning, we are talking about development, we are talking about protection. So that integrated service is what we are talking about. So when you have early childhood center, you are talking about does it have all these services? Not just education per se, but also do the mothers know how to feed the child? Do the mothers, before they become mothers, do they understand what it takes to become a mother? So the people who provide services, the social service providers, must be able to educate this mother-to-be to understand what it takes. To understand that, okay, breastfeeding is important. That the breastfeeding within the first one hour of birth is extremely important. And why? And why must you breastfeed for at least six months exclusively. Without, exclusively without other supplements and up to two years, we are saying, a minimum. Okay. You can decide to, I was breastfed up to four years. You know how? Yeah, because um, I'm the first boy of my mother, and uh, my mother was looking for a boy. There were two girls, so she was excited. So I was breastfed. <laughs> I could go to class, come back, <laughs> and I continued. <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> okay. Well, um, I wanted to ask, because we keep mentioning daycare centers, and we filmed a daycare center, is it just in schools, or is it, I mean, in... in centers or is it at home does it go back to the home and wherever else a child is exposed yes very definitely i think um as our, my colleagues have said early childhood is about the entirety of a child's life from birth onwards um so there are child care centers but the home the child care centers are trying to replicate a fantastic Ooh. home um, and so we need to think well what does what does a fantastic home look like and do the childcare centres that we're taking our children to, do they match? Um, is there a lot of um, interaction? Is there good quality interaction? Are there lots of stimulating activities? Are the children engaged? Is there adequate rest? Um, are the activities age appropriate? All of that goes into early childhood care. Okay. And so whether it's in the home or in a centre or in a school, the same questions need to be asked. You, you mentioned are the activities stimulating and, and I'd like to know when you say stimulating, what does that mean? Ah, learning is active. Yeah. Um, quite often people assume that babies are like a sponge and they'll just absorb anything that you put next to them. But they're actually very logical little beings and um, the baby's mind is incredibly active. In those first six years, we learn more as a human being than at any other six year period of our lives. And so it's one of the most exciting times in terms of human development. Um, it's it's um, excessively important to make sure that during that time, children have lots and lots of experiences. Now that doesn't mean um, going into a supermarket and buying lots of plastic toys necessarily. Yeah. It means just allowing your child to explore, allowing them to explore, interacting with them, um, talking with them, not just at them, not yeah. just giving instructions. Asking questions. Yes. Yes. You know, oftentimes we think that children are just a blank page. They are not. So you write they whatever have so you want. Many, yeah, that's what that's some what people, people think. imagine. Mm -hmm. Children are not a blank page. Mm -hmm. Children, their minds are looking at things, interpreting them, 
trying to understand, being inquisitive, mommy, daddy, what does this mean? Yeah. And so it's important for the mother and father to be able to respond to the questions that children are seeing. They see everything. Yeah. And the world is like uh, a school. There are so many things that go on. And children are watching. Whatever you do, they are interpreting. Why does mother do this? Why does father do this? Etc. Et I know you are going to go to the role of the father. <laughs> uh, able to answer. But I wanted to put that into perspective. That yeah. whatever the child is seeing forms into the mind and the brain. And they interpret. And what they don't understand, they'll ask. Yeah. As a mother, as a father, it's your responsibility to respond. Okay. Yes. And I would like to just add on, I, ideally where this comes from is not just because we're saying it, it actually happens in the human mind, scientifically. Children's brains have neurons, they have the highest number of neurons when they're born. So they have a child, a, your 14 month old child has way more brain neurons than we do. And so that means the connections that your child makes, um, the, the neural activity, that the, the questions you ask your 14 month old child, the questions you ask your two-month-old child, the way you speak to your two-month-old child, actually helps those neurons make connections mm -hmm. inside their brains. And Absolutely. so if you're not making these connections, what happens is they actually die. And so that the, way the, the way neurons are stimulated is like they light up. And then they just continue to make quick connections inside there in the brain. And so the, the children have up to, I mean, is, is it quadrillion? Mm. Yeah, quadrillion neurons when they're born. And so Mamela, imagine when you how say many words like neurons, quadro neur what? <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's, um, it's a basic unit. It's, like, it's a basic unit of a brain, okay. and it's just how you, how you think, what makes you think, what makes you speak, what makes you, it's just how the brain is formed. So give me an example, Manuela. You are talking to a ten-month-old baby. Yes. What is? I'd actually like, like to talk to a one-week-old baby. Okay. So let's one start from a one-week-old. Let's one start from a baby in the womb. That, okay, a baby. Okay. Actually, even before we go, after we've gone out of the womb, let me say I'm talking. Um, I'm I'm dressing my child's umbilical cord. Mm -hmm. I'm going to speak to my child about how I'm dressing their umbilical cord. Hey, baby, I got you some cotton. Look, I'm putting some saline on it. Saline has water and salt. It's going to heal your little wound. You're going to get better. Mm -hmm. And you're looking at them straight in the eye. What's happening is you're speaking to them and you actually get a reaction back from mm -hmm. them. They listen to these mm -hmm. words over and over again. The next time you get cotton, they start to understand, mm, cotton comes with salt and a certain feeling on my tummy. You know what I mean? And then you say, isn't that painful? Does that make you hurt? Does that, does that hurt you? And then they fold up their bodies. Who's folding up their bodies? And you're speaking to them. You're talking to them like, and you're not there going, go, go, papa. Oh, do, 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 oh, oh. You know, you're actually having a conversation with them. What happens is their minds just wake up mm. and they're looking at cotton. They're seeing it differently. They're looking at a smile. They're looking at uh, the, the feeling that they have when you place that cotton. Into, or you're feeding them, you're breastfeeding. Oh, how does that taste, darling? Does that taste sweet or not? Is that too much or is that too little? And you're speaking to them, they're right here on your breast. I, I recently had a, an, an experience, Manila, forgive me for cutting you I short. I thought you were saying you had recently a baby. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there was a, a child that had, he was using his left hand, but he was left with a nanny and the nanny was slapping his left hand and saying, um, no, you know, use, your use right. the, right, the mm. right hand. And I think that's a common thing that happens because people think, Maybe this is not the way things are done, so you have to, you yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, but going back to what you said, looking at the baby in the womb, I don't want to really uh, use examples that are very far from us. As mothers, you know, even when the baby is in the womb and, I mean, is trying to either kick or this kick side, or the, the mothers always talk and say, don't kick me, and the, and the baby will stop immediately. So the baby begins, the brain begins functioning even when the child is in the womb. When he comes out, just continues. And that's why, mm -hmm. going back to stimulation, we are helping these, uh, my friend here was using neurons. But let's just use basic examples. And most of us are agriculturalists. And when you go out there, you plant cassava in the, in, in the soil. It will start with thread-like. And, and, and when you, the more you nurture, the more you add the soil and the water, the thread-like will grow into a bigger cassava. So those are like the brain. And that's why you think, Josephine, when you sit in the studio here, you are better off 
than other guys. Why? Because your language development was supported at that early age. Okay. So the neurons is the formation of the brain cells yeah. that help you help the child to interpret, to think, to do so many things. And so if you interrupt the neurons formation, then you interrupt the formation of the brain. Okay. That's why you see some people think on half a brain, others think on no, <laughs> the full brain. I'm curious to know what somebody who thinks on half a brain you know, <laughs> is thinking. But let's take a short break. We'll be right back from the Kampala Serena Conference Center, Nile Room. And we're still talking about early childhood, integrated early <laughs> childhood development. <laughs> national, <laughs> national integrated. integrated. OK, movement. great, great. That's what we're talking about. Now, I wanted to know, and I'm glad we have men on the panel today, usually the man's role in the home for a lot of, of homes, and when I was actually doing a bit of research ahead of the show, is that the father is, is present but participates only when the child has gotten to an age where they can send them for the remote control or tell them do not do this and they can understand or but what is the role of the father in the early years the role of the father starts from when the wife of the girlfriend is planning to get pregnant as early as that the care the protection the everything that you do does impact on the growth of the child. Yeah. If you shout at your pregnant wife, the neurons that my friend was talking about, the formation <laughs> of the the brain. Brain interrupted. Yeah. What the do brain you mean formation. interrupted? Then you said half brain. They will break. They will yeah, break, break. So they will not be complete. That's why you find some children who are repeating classes time and again. If you lose it in the first 1,000 days, there's a lot of negative impact which you can never redress so the wife or the girlfriend being pregnant the care you give to that that's where it starts to be a father yeah you have seen people who are fathers who are mothers but they are not parents and i want people to understand the difference not every father not every mother is a parent yeah. Parenting starts at that time when your sweetheart is planning to get pregnant or you are planning to make her pregnant yeah. either way. Yeah. So that's where the duty begins. That's yeah. And it goes all through. The Even while the child is in the womb. Yes, Audrey. Yes, <laughs> could I add to this? Um, there's been quite a lot of recent research to look at the, the, um, the influence of both the father and the mother on, on early childhood learning. And um, it's quite well established that the, the father's input and interaction in those very early days is very important in terms of the child developing um, all sorts of communication skills and confidence. Wow. And, and so it's, it's quite holistic um, development. The, the other thing to bear in mind is that um, we interact in different ways. So fathers tend to allow young children to take more risk and learning to take risk, measured risk, is also an important part of child development. If I can very quickly give an example but of an older child, my, my daughter climbed an avocado tree and um, she got to the top when she was, she was quite young and, and I was scared stiff, rushed inside to my husband who was sitting on the sofa and said, um, she's at the top of the, of the avocado tree. And he looked at me and he said, tell her to get some good avocado while she's there. <laughs> I was expecting him to spring up and rush up. Now, the fact is that that young lady, now she's a lot older and she, she knows how to take risks. She's very adventurous in her life. Um, but had she just been with me, I would have mollycoddled her. I would have stopped her from taking some of those risks. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's important to also bear that in mind. Yeah, agreed. Calculated yeah. risks. Can I yeah. add one yes. thing, Joseph? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and I say that uh, on top of providing for the children in the home, I know most of us fathers will say, but I'm out looking for food. Fine, that's mm -hmm. one of your roles. Mm -hmm. but Are they? I mean, <laughs> well, quite often. Yeah. That would yeah. be a discussion the for the next time. But <laughs> today, the time, the looking there. at yes. be there, play with the child, mm. talk to the child. And when you're talking to the child, talk at their level. Talk at, uh, I mean, the, mm. uh, the, 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 the voice you use, the intonation mm. you use, mm -hmm. let it be friendly. Mm. Not firm and, and uh, Listen to the children so that they can talk and give them chance to talk as you listen. 
That's very important. But as fathers, we are very busy. Now we are either watching Arsenal and Manchester. Well, but the children are there, and these are and our children. Sakala, I've been telling people yes. that if you don't have time to look after your child, don't do the business that brings children into it, the world. Right. <laughs> because okay. it's Good very point. important <laughs> that you are there for the children. Yeah. Yeah. So if you are very busy, I went to a district, and I said, you know, uh, Commissioner, you know, the people here are suffering from TB. I said, what? How come I don't know? The whole district is suffering from TB. And someone said, too busy. Too busy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I shuddered. I mean, the children and the people are now using institutions to say, okay, I'm too busy. So they take the children to wherever Good they point. want them to yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. Nursery school is going to a boarding school. Yeah. That's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I, would, I would quickly say that I, um, there's a point at which, because I'm of that age group that's too busy, that's suffering from TB. And <laughs> I, would, I would say, yeah, I, w uh, I would very calculatively say that even the moments that we have with our children, we're not using them. You're driving your children to church. Mm -hmm. you're, you're taking them to bed. You're bathing them. You're eating with them. Those small moments, you Matter. need to make use of them. I always keep telling, people ask me why I have no maid. But that's the only way I can interact with my children because I have TB. So now it means when I... I get, please keep saying too busy because too somebody <laughs> will do <laughs> 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 because, I, because I'm too busy. Because now it means I have to feed my children. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. have to bathe my children. I have to put them to bed. And that, that, those, those few five, Moments. ten minutes that mean time. a lot yeah. for a child. Because we are not yes. saying don't go to work altogether. We're mm -hmm. saying go and work. But the few moments, make them count. Make it about quality rather yes. than just quantity. So usually when we have our children with us over Christmas, the thing that we're doing is taking them to I don't know which play area. For We are not even taking time to interact with time our children. Mm. You know, we're buying them presents to kind of cover for the, the fact set. that we're not there. And yet, we just need to sit the... Have, have you ever asked your child how their day was? And actually listened and waited for an answer. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, Josephine, <laughs> one, more, one more thing. Have you heard about bonding and attachment? At this age, children need that bonding and attachment from the father also. Mm -hmm. The reason why children associate very much with the mothers, because there is that attachment and bonding. Even when they're breastfeeding, the mother is like out of the 24 hours, the mother is with the child, either breastfeeding, uh, playing with it, talking to it, and the, and, the, and, the, and the father is somewhere else. So mm. I'm, as a father, I'm calling upon my fellow uh, uh, I, I, mean, I hope colleagues. you practice what you preach, though. I wish you are people my are home. watching. Oh, great. <laughs> They'll report him if he's not. When you get home, I don't want people saying. <laughs> my wife is watching right now. <laughs> and I wish she could call in. And okay. tell you. Audrey, you wanted to say something? I wanted to add um, to what Manuela says. I'm so happy to have met her today. I think she's a marvelous young lady. Now, in, in those interactions, those small pockets of interactions, mm. There are all sorts of um, levels of learning yep. taking place. Mm -hmm. And so um, one of the things I often say to young families is um, don't let the maid do everything. If, no. there's, if there's something to be cut up in the kitchen, do it with your two-year-old. They love it. They, there's all sorts of mathematical learning in there, scientific learning, mm -hmm. um, setting the table. It's yep. one-to-one -one correspondence. Who's going to be home today? Yep. Um, or they'll be turns. daddy and mommy and <laughs> you and me. And at first, they'll go to the cutlery drawer and they'll pick up everything. Yeah. And then they start letting the, laying the table and they realize that they've got too many. Now that's mathematics already. Yeah. Too many, too few, mm -hmm. the same as. Yeah. So there, there's all sorts of levels of learning. And sometimes the child in the village is more fortunate yes. than the one yeah. living in Kololo because mm. in Kololo it's all sanitized and the maid does everything. The child in the village is often interacting with mom and dad. Yeah. And so they, they're getting the scientific learning and the mathematical skills. Yeah. And I suspect, I've got no proof, but I suspect that's why sometimes when children, older children come in with lower grades from school at P7, they are doing better in secondary school because they've had some Same. foundation of, of interacting and learning by doing. Uh, yeah. I actually agree with her. We, the problem is we have is we wait to, for our children to get into school when they're three years old to start learning. Mm. But children actually start to learn 
while they're at home. They're learning about, she said, mathematics. Your, ch your child, by the time they go to school, already can count. They don't know the numbers, but they can see this is one tomato, two tomatoes. Hey, honey, bring me three tomatoes. So mm -hmm. they can count the three tomatoes and they can bring them to you. They don't have to go to school to start to wait to learn about to learn mathematics uh, and mathematics and, you know. or okay. so, so but also, I agree with uh, Audrey when you talk about um, a certain level of risk I think the children your children Karun's children they will tend to be less creative because you are providing everything yeah. there's need to allow them some level of, of innovation yes, yes. creativity yeah. That's why you find a child from the village comes to Kampala and will defeat everybody. Mm -hmm. Because they have some level of creativity. You buy a toy to your child. If it goes for two days without it being spoiled, you'll be very lucky. But you get a child from the village who will make his or her own ball. That ball will be protected. That level of creativity. Mm -hmm. So. How much space are we giving to our children to innovate, to and create? It's, it's not even just space, but even asking them questions that help them start to solve these problems or to think creatively. To think, yes. uh, okay, so and I'd, I'd like to, very quickly, to allow uh, our audience to ask us a few questions. Okay, but let me allow you to say Yeah, but I, I wanted also to say that um, the impact does not only stop at the childhood level. It goes with it's us, happy, even when we are adults. To do, just walk into the bank, people don't have that patience. They can't wait that let, I'm on queue and then I'll be next to be served. Traffic jam, what has brought <laughs> impatience? <laughs> and at <laughs> early childhood, <laughs> people are patient, they take turns, they wait, and the training starts at they that They said page. please and thank you. I, actually yeah, said, well, please. I wrote something on my page today. I said, don't teach your child how to take turns if you can't take turns at, in, during traffic. So you're driving them to school. Yeah, you're and, and then you're just there. going in. Okay, and then you're let's, trying to let's teach quickly take the questions. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. This is Gachum Joan Pashaya. Uh, my question is, I've been wondering why kids from village, like from villages, deep villages, they're not exposed to very many ways of child development, but when they come up, they beat up these children, city children, that have been really so exposed to child development. Right, thank, thank, you. You. thank you very much. I think that has been answered with yeah. one of the things that was said. Let's have the next question. Uh, I'm called Isaac. Yes. Uh, I wonder why some kids are very aggressive when they're young. I would like to know the cause. And does taking them to kindergarten reduce the aggressiveness? Thank okay, well, and a quick response. Yeah. 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 Um, looking at the children, why they're aggressive, children do what they see. Uh -huh. What is happening out there? <laughs> children, today, we have left th the, 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 the TVs to be uh, the, the, the fathers and the mothers of our children. Yeah. And what is happening? They're seeing people fighting, wherever, in streets. In the so they will also learn to be aggressive. Actually, the <laughs> research we have been doing as Minister of Gender, uh, Violence Against Children Survey, indicates that uh, if a child grows up in a violent family, the possibility that this child is going to be violent are 99%. So the children... Can like I, can I say have, you listen, have you seen the ACE, the ACE uh, research? Uh, um, it's not the Accelerated Christian Education, but it's something about adverse childhood experiences. Actually, they have even higher chances of things like heart disease, dying of cancer, mm. as long as they've gone through violence in their homes. So if you're fighting your else. wife every day, mm -hmm. The possibility <laughs> that your child <laughs> is going to be violent and fight the wife. And have all these diseases as well. Wait, 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 yes, wait, 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 wait a minute. <laughs> the, you know, the, the problem is that we, we, we've, we started this conversation by acknowledging the fact that um, the, uh, from, a ba from babyhood, a child is an active learner and yeah. they're, they're mm. also are, they're collecting masses of data and they're seeing patterns mm. and, they're, mm. and they're, they're to some extent independent, largely independent in actual fact for a lot of children. Now, quite often you'll get parents who have never had an argument in front of their children. Sometimes they don't even have a television in the home. And the child goes into uh, church or daycare and scratches another child. And the parents are horrified. Where did they get it from? Did they see it from the neighbor? Not necessarily. Children are not a sponge. 
they do not just absorb things that they see around them. Yes, they are affected very much by what they see around them, but they also can make decisions. And you see that in the way they, they're learning language. When we, talk, we talked earlier on about how children learn language. Um, a baby is hearing lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of speech. So Audrey, it's and about then, the entire ecosystem. But wait, wait, let me just finish this point. The, the let me just finish this point. Mother, but the entire ecosystem. Yeah. That's, the, that's my sure. whole point. They may not have seen it from the neighbors. They haven't seen it, it could from be innate. the TV. It could it, be something it, from the world. It we may born. be, <laughs> it may be, no, <laughs> it, may well, be. it may be just that the child has seen something that somebody else has and they want it and they make a decision at that moment that, that I'm going it. to get it. Now, what we do as adults is that we should intervene in that situation and say, well, what else could you have done? Let's, let's have turns with this. So you'll get a turn in two minutes and you time it and you give them their turn. Okay. They start to learn a little bit at a time that I don't have to grab and there's going to be a consequence if I do. Okay, so now we know where it starts from and how to help the situation. Mm. Another question. Um, thank you, I'm Trish. Can music increase visual, motor, attention and mathematical skills in children? Absolutely, Chris. 100% correct. Music is, is fantastic at wiring the brain in a different way. Yeah. And um, so even, sometimes people assume that if they're going to let their child m learn an instrument, it's because they want them to be a musician, not at all. Yeah, um, exactly. It's just another way of exploring your creativity. Um, it certainly does help with mathematical and scientific thinking. Again, yeah. because all of mathematics is about pattern and relationships. Yeah. Does that yeah. also partly explain the lullabies that uh, we have we, for we children? Sing with them. Yeah. But also, we so. are advised as husbands that um, caressing your wife while she's oh, pregnant yeah. is important. You mm -hmm. are communicating with the child. I'm not even going to touch you. We were all concerned, actually. <laughs> Then you see, you are communicating to that toddler <laughs> that mm -hmm. inside there, that child, and is receiving the peace, the tranquility oh, within. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if you're going to shout in your home, it becomes a problem. The yeah. child's brain, the neurons that she talks about, will be affected. Can I say and something I'm, about I'm music? I'm a little worried. You said uh, music is good for mathematics. And, mm -hmm. But my family is going to think this is personal for me because I, my mathematics is really... Bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, is it, does it really, what, how does music work there? The p music is patterned. Mm -hmm. There's rhythm, there's meter, there's all sorts of different concepts within music. Mm -hmm. And when you're learning to play an instrument, um, you are, you're having to use all sorts of different senses and you're having to see a pattern and you're having to respond to that pattern. Now, mathematics is just pattern. People think it's very hard, but it's, the reason you, are, you may not be good at mathematics may be nothing to do with your personal <laughs> ability, <laughs> yeah. but to do with your experiences when you went into school. If yeah. the teacher did not show you the logic and the patterns and allow you to explore those patterns, it wouldn't have made any sense to you. Exactly. And if it doesn't make any sense to you, you think it's hard and you withdraw. Yeah, and then like, I, I would like to say something about music very and even the way we learn mathematics is that what the problem is right now, many parents have heard us talk about music, so tomorrow they're going to go and take their children to go and learn music, yeah. which is not necessarily the case. Your child has to lead you in that direction. Mm -hmm. So my child is very interested in cars, so I'm using cars to teach mathematics, to teach, to teach mm -hmm. everything else that I needed to teach using the fact that he absolutely loves cars. If I want to teach him about rain, I have to start from his cars and how it affects the rain. So. It's not, just a, it's not just music, anything. If they love to mm -hmm. sing, if they love mirrors, if they love anything, if they're interested in a particular something, Perform you use them. that to teach them. Okay. So okay. They, so what they used for you might not have been. I think mine was a little deeper. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take, <laughs> we're gonna take a, uh, another short break, but when we return, I'd like us to have a brief conversation about how to discipline children at that young age. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back took the break I'd said we'd talk about punishment when, when we came back so um, here's actually a question how should parents discipline children how does one strike the right balance between permissiveness and cruelty <laughs> silence <laughs> no. well, we can't we need to okay with well the, the issue is um, <laughs> corporal punishment is outlawed mm. according to the Children's Act 2016 but also the education policy. 
you are not supposed to like the brutal thing we have been watching on TV, children left with maids and things happening. That's criminal. That's criminal. But we are not saying that you should not discipline a child. Discipline does not necessarily mean inflicting pain, pain. Yeah. Yeah. on the child. You can talk to the child. You can say, you know, you bring her chocolates every day. You can deny her a chocolate. But there is a child and who understands. What of the age where they're not yet um, at the age where... But children, children do understand. understand. That's the thing that we've been saying. Why children understand? Okay, so let's say the age where we cannot at, negotiate. They will look at you yes. and understand whether you are hurt, okay. whether you are angry or not. So yeah. what do so I do at that point? So we've been certain we've facilities. <laughs> mm. We've been, talking, we've been talking about relationships. If you're talking to your child, mm. okay, like the way I was talking to you, I was talking mm. to this child whose umbilical cord we are working on, mm. you're able to show an expression. Yeah. Your child sees you happy at times. Yeah. Then so it so sees I am a parent, I am a parent maybe mm. who has not been practicing that. I have a three-year-old or four-year-old. Mm. What do I do now as mm -hmm. punishment? You have to stop. Audrey. <laughs> uh, what the, somebody asked me just the, this, this, just the other day, um, what I said to them was this, if you are used to always just shouting and barking mm. instructions. Your child is going to become immune to that. Mm. So when you really want them to, to do something or to listen to something, get their attention first. And then tell them what it is you want them to do. Don't tell them what you want them to not do. So if they're climbing up on a chair, um, just say to them, stay on the floor. Don't say, don't climb on the chair. Um, stay on the floor. It's time to eat your food now. It's time to take a bath. So that you're telling them what it is you want them to do. But also, the other thing to bear in mind is that it's very important that children um, start to realize that you are telling these things to them because you love them and because you have a purpose for them. And so the manner in which things are said is also important. It, and that's not easy as a parent. Sometimes you are going to lose it and snap and things like that. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is that it's very important to make sure that children, um, as far as possible, are, are raised in a situation whereby they know that you are telling them um, these things out of a situation out of, of love. care, out oh, of love. Oh. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah. You had something to say? No, I, I was just to add on what she, uh, actually she's, uh, the point she's making, that communication is the most important thing. How we talk to children uh, matters a lot. First of all, you have to acknowledge. Children have feelings. Yeah. By the, the, the time either they are, they are making the noise, either they are excited. It's just about talking with them and talking at their level and showing them that facial expression will say that daddy today is not happy about what I'm doing. And yeah. they will change. Yeah. But when you begin with the sticks, shortly or soon, <laughs> they will get used. Yeah. They become immune. Yeah. 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 Sorry. No, I was, I was going to just bring up another concept of consequences. I, I, I once saw a child being punished, and this is how it happened. The child did something. The dad called the child and said, so you know you're going to get punished? And he said, yes. And so he asked him, do you know why you're going to get punished? He said, yes. Then the, boy, then the little boy said, but dad, I'm sorry. And then the dad said, and this, this for me was a, was a changing point, because if my child tells me they're sorry and they're crying, mm. usually I would say, <laughs> okay, now you've learned, and then I wipe their tears and hold them. Mm. The dad said, I know you're sorry, but there's consequences. You remember, t you know? So it, you don't have to just be sorry. I understand that you're sorry, because that's what life does to you. However mm. much you're sorry about doing something wrong, life there's always consequences. Okay. So now your child is learning, is no, is, is no longer learning that, oh, when I do something, I get beaten. No, they're learning consequences as opposed to punishment. So okay. I do something wrong, I can be sorry, but, but there's a consequence. Yes. Manuela, yes. I'd like you to wrap up for us. Um, something you'd like us to go back home with, and I think you had a question to answer in oh, your final Oh, you've comment. put them together? Okay. Um, <laughs> Our time is fast spent. So yes. Mm. Um, I, the question was on, ch on child care centers yeah. and the role of child care centers or daycare centers. Ideally, what the child care center should be is an extension of a parent. It shouldn't be a replacement of a parent. Mm -hmm. So parents should also be very involved in what the daycare center is doing, how they are doing it, how they are raising their children. Sometimes the problems we have is a parent doesn't want, say, for example, their child to be punished or... Uh, 
to, to consequences. And yet this is a place that is raising your child. So you should be in a place where you discuss how do I want my child to be raised. Right. The second thing that I would say very for quickly. child care centers very quickly is how to stimulate their children. That they should be stimulating children because now they're they're an extension of a parent's arm. They should be stimulating our children to the point that they're looking at problem solving, they're critical thinkers, they're creative thinkers, even before they go to school, because now they're the parents of the child. Very yeah. good. Audrey. Uh, my question was about developing language. How do you help yes. a child to develop language? Um, quite a lot of parents make the mistake of only speaking one language to their child. It's quite okay to speak um, two, three languages with the children. They are um, very active learners and they are able to separate those languages with time. Um, so you need to give them reasons to talk. Yep. So you interact with them as, as my colleague here was saying earlier on, if you're driving along, you're talking with them. I wonder how far, I know how far it is to grandma's. I wonder how long it will take us. Do you know you're, where we are? Yes, <laughs> and you're reading shop signs, oh, you know, and you, you say what the shop signs are. Any opportunities you take to, to interact with them, they're building a notion of how this language works. Work. Work. All right, thank you very much, Audrey. And mine was about brain stimulation. Yes. And, and the question was... Uh, about some children not being able to be stimulated regardless exactly. of what Exactly. But I, I would like to say that it is the way children are being stimulated. Th th that process, we take them through. I don't know how many of you, when we are growing up, we, we used to have simple things like helping, uh, allowing you to dress up. And when you put in the short, by that time we used to put in shorts, and you can put in one, one leg. One leg. And as you walk, it, it makes you think that there is something wrong. Yeah. Today, they're not giving them the opportunity to do even those on. small, small things that can stimulate the brain to think. Create puzzles. Give them puzzles to add, to fix. That helps the brain to open up, right. and that is stimulation. Thank you very much. And finally... Mine was about the feeding. The feeding is extremely important. When you eat cassava consistently, you become cassava. <laughs> <laughs> there are four. Right from the pregnancy, the way the mother is fed is very important. That's why they tell you that, you know, when you are pregnant, you should not overtake alcohol. Because the child, you produce a child who is already drunk. <laughs> so it is important how you feed the mother or how the mother feeds herself. A balanced diet is very important. It's not about... You know, Kunwa Woji. To produce a child yeah. who is maize. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the feeding is very important. Even for brain formation, mm -hmm. even for the neurons to connect, is extremely important. All right. Thank you all very much for taking the time to join us for the show tonight.